Hello guys, welcome back to the Game of Muscle YouTube channel and welcome to this Assetto Corsa Competition Quick Virtual Reality Start Guide. Uh, we're going to go through some tips on how to launch it in VR in case it's not working for you, how to get it looking a bit sharper in VR and what settings to use in game with VR. But bear in mind at the moment as the game's in early access it's not fully optimized, it doesn't tend to run very well and because, uh, because Unreal Engine is using a deferred render rather than a forward rendering method you can't get the classic anti-aliasing. So there's a little bit of jiggery pokery. Hopefully things will improve in the future, but at the moment you might want to give it a break with the VR because even on my 1080 Ti uh, i7, it's a little bit it's a little bit slow, and you're lucky to get above 45 FPS. But with that in mind, if you want to run in VR, make sure you're running. You, you've got your VR headset plugged in, and that's all running your Oculus and what have you. Uh, if you click on the game. If I click on the game, I get these options here and I can choose to run in VR. And if I do that, it will launch in VR on the headset. Fantastic. Some people, however, are not getting that option. To fix that, if you right click on it, click properties, and then you go to set launch options and you type in dash VR, click OK. And when you launch the game, it should launch in VR. Hopefully, for those of you that weren't getting VR, that then fixes that. Now, separate to that, if you want to have the game look a bit sharper, regardless of the settings in-game, there's a text file you can edit, which is the engine.ini text file, which is located in this directory here. In my case, it's C users Q6700, that's my uh, computer username after the processor. App data, local, AC2, saved, config, forward slash windows no editor and that gets you to the folder you need and then you double click on engine once you uh, load up the engine file i'll double click on it again why not once you load up the engine file you won't you, you will see all this stuff here you might have something uh, different for, for openvr but if you've got an oculus rift you should see all this and you need to add this console variables r dot tone mapper sharpen equals three or you can put equals two equals three uh two two seems quite nice three is quite nice three is a bit over the top maybe but what this does is it does that tone mapping effect it's like the uh the the uh, effect that you've got in uh, eye racing that just crispens things up a bit makes the textures a little bit more poppy uh just it, it just makes things look a bit more obvious uh, it looks, I, I don't know how else, else to better describe it. It's not really sharpening. It's more just, it's like a Photoshop filter effect. But make sure you type in that, save the file, and uh, make sure you do this when AC is not on. And that will then enable the tone mapper in Assetto Corsa Competition. Now we'll close out of that. We'll close this. And we will launch in 2D so I can go over the settings very quickly because uh, in VR, you guys can't see, uh, that's fraps, ignore that. <laughs> in VR, you guys can't see the menu, like you can't see the menu on the display. So what I'm capturing using an Elgato now, you'll be able to see the menu. So I'm loading this in 2D. So I'm gonna go through the settings in 2D that you need to change to be able to do a seto in, uh, in, in VR. Now the first thing, if you wait for it to load, the first thing you're going to need to do is go to your... Right, we're going to have to restart the game because I forgot to turn my controller on. And I'll explain why you need to turn your controller on. First thing you're going to need to set before you launch in VR, and you're going to have to do this in 2D, is you have to map a D-pad or a, uh, a, a controller. You might have a D-pad on your steering wheel if you've got like a T300 or a Fanatec wheel. In this, I don't. I, I'm using a custom rim. So in this case, I'm using uh, the D-pad on the Xbox 360 controller. You need to go to your options, controls, and you need to go to user interface and then bind the D-pad as well as a forwards and backwards button, uh, either on your wheel or on your controller, because otherwise you can't use the interface. There's no mouse in the VR mode and there's also, no, the keyboard doesn't work. So you have to bind these buttons here. Uh, pretty self-explanatory forwards and backwards that's like a or b button up down left right use the uh, you know the directions on there to navigate the menu cycle right and cycle left uh, are like the shoulder button equivalent so when you've got uh, an option 
to shuffle it across. We'll show that in a second. Uh, and pause button is quite handy. But without them and without that saved, good luck using VR. So now we've got that set up, we can use the controller to navigate the menus and we'll be able to navigate them in VR. If I go to a single player event, you will see that when I... Uh, oh, single player event, let's go to more, more options, more options. Uh, what we got? Okay, so where we've got the bar at the top, if I use the shoulder buttons, that lets me scroll through the options there. So you can then use it with a controller and you can tell that to Seto Corsa, the, the, the interface is total consoleitis. They've designed it to work with a controller. I'm pretty sure they're going for Seto Corsa to be a cross-platform game entirely based off the user interface. The user interface is a little bit pants compared to your average PC game interface but for, for if you're using the d-pad on the wheel and the controller it's actually all right for that so you know it depends what you're used to it depends how much of a uh, a weird opc person that that hides yourself in a basement uh, or if you're a console player or if you've got a d-pad on your wheel but anyway so we've got that set up let's go to the options avoid the rant guys avoid the rant we we'll go to video options and we'll quickly go through what video options I recommend for VR. Now, there, there, there's going to be some aspects of people liking different things here. Some people will prefer some settings, some people others. This is just what I got after doing nine... Well, we spent about two and a half, three hours of messing around with settings while I was live streaming, and we played for about seven or eight hours live streaming in total. So this is what we got. Uh, this is what I recommend at this point in time. It, this might not be the best thing to do at, at the end of the day, but for now, this seems to work okay. So, full screen uh, enabled, uh, V-Sync disabled or enabled, it doesn't seem to matter. V-Sync's on on the headset regardless. Uh, resolution scale, I set it to 200. Obviously, you, you're now running the game at double the resolution. It's, it's basically like running super sampling. You probably find that if you run resolution scale on here, it's exactly the same as if you were to run 2.0 in uh, Oculus Dash or something else that super samples it uh, or the NVIDIA control panel. So if you're doing it here, don't do it in that. If you're doing it in the other thing, don't do it in this. But the point is we're running at double resolution, view distance uh, epic, shadows mid, anti-aliasing off. And uh, th this is a crucial one. <laughs> go for the anti-aliasing here now you could you can turn it down like turn the resolution scale all the way down and uh, maybe have it on a hundred uh have it on a hundred and then use temporal uh anti-aliasing and put that on on epic and that will make it look uh smooth it gets rid of jaggies but it will also make it look really blurry uh and even with the text file edit that i mentioned at the start of the video it's, it's, it's just blurry. It's, it's nowhere near as good as a Seto Corsa in VR, iRacing in VR, a Live for Speed in VR, Richard Burns Rally in VR. And as I say, it's because they have uh, a forward renderer that can do traditional anti-aliasing. Uh, the anti-aliasing you've got with, with this, with it being a deferred renderer, is that it's, it's kind of like an, an, an effect. It's kind of like a it's NVIDIA magic to do uh, anti-aliasing. I'm using a 1080 Ti. It's possible with the uh, RTX 20 series graphics cards that they, they're coming with an RTX AA. That might work with, with a crispness to it and that might rectify this, but I don't have that graphics card and that, that uh, drive is not out yet. So that's a moot point regardless. But maybe in the future, that'll be a better way of doing it. But for, for now, if you use Epic Temporal AA, it works, it looks smooth, but it looks blurred. And you get all these like weird effects, like ghosting. It looks like they it looks like the cars are some kind of gas coming out the back of the cars. It just it it looks off. It doesn't look right to me. You might want to try this yourself uh, and give it a go. Try everything out, but I, it totally it just looked off to me. I really don't like it personally. FXAA looks absolutely awful. Shimmery. Don't even bother with that. Try temporal. Don't bother with FXAA. Uh, personally. I would just turn it off and use the 200 resolution scale. Uh, then I would basically just go through all these other options and basically turn them to, to low. You just want to get it so it runs. And it'll, it's going to, in my case, even on the lowest settings, it's with a 1080 Ti and an i7, uh, it, it runs at 45 FPS. So <laughs> basically, just uh, turn the rest of the settings to the lowest setting and turn them up gradually. I would recommend turning the shadows to medium and the effects to medium and the post-processing to medium. The reason I've gone for medium is at that point, it actually looks, you, you get nice shadows in the cockpit. It doesn't look totally off. 
uh, it's just that you know this is just what I kind of got to where it seems to perform reasonably good um, obviously with it running at 45 FPS uh, it's gonna be um, it's gonna be you that that's asynchronous space warp so that's what you're leaning on that's what it's using you might want to press control 2 on your keyboard uh, or just go to the oculus dash and force always on um asynchronous space warp or in, in the open vr case force um reprojection on and just have it at 45 all the time because what you do notice is even though 45 fps and asynchronous space warp or reprojection isn't ideal in vr you really want to get 90 fps normally um if you are in asynchronous reprojection uh, or space warp, uh, as long as it's not switching from not being in it and in in it, it's, con it's consistent. So having it always in it is better, especially in the case of driving simulators, than having it be 90, then then not, then 90, then not, then 90, then not, because you'll you'll notice a stutter that's just bloody annoying. So I would force uh, the uh, the space warp on. Basically, is what I'm saying. Woo, get there eventually. Get it out the mouth. Get it out the mouth. I need more tea. We've run out of tea and I need a biscuit for sure. But there you go, guys. That That's the settings there. D motion blur disabled. Saturation 100. Uh, mirror quality on low. I mean, as I say, put it on the lowest settings. Gradually, gradually push them up. But with all that, with all that said and done, that should basically allow you to play a set of course of competition in VR. Um, you need a supercomputer. It's early access. I would expect optimizations to come later on, and, and hopefully they can optimize it a lot better than it is now. They need to really get another sort of 50% performance out of it. Because even if you had a 20, um, a, a 2080 graphics card, one of the latest RTX graphics cards, 30% boost of hardware oomph, latest uh, pr processor, you're still not going to be getting enough overhead to run this at medium settings. Uh, and hit a constant 90 fps even, even if i turn even after even if i don't run uh super sampling the 200 on the resolution scale and turn everything to absolute low even then on a dry track with other cars it's it it, it goes to 45 fps for me and uh sometimes on my own just on my own driving around by myself it will it will then stay at 90 but it, it looks worse than a set of course on low settings then so <laughs> you know but um it's in the game the vr support is there at a basic level so that's nice that kunos have done that i'm sure and hope it will get better uh i hope this has uh informed you and uh, helped you get going for those of you having trouble with vr sorry if i witted on a bit too much just trying to get all the information in there uh, as quick as possible but uh yeah there you go guys if you did find this useful, click the like button, subscribe to the channel. Uh, any questions, throw them in the uh, throw them in the in, in the comment section. And anyone that knows answers to those questions or have specific settings that you found work really well, especially as AC is being updated, um, answer them. Answer people's questions. Say what what worked for you. Put it in there, and that'll be a really nice reference. And I'll update this video as later versions of AC come out. But uh, there we go. Hallelujah. We're done. Thanks for watching this. Until the next one, guys. Keep drinking tea. Enjoy your biscuits. That's a nice car. Goodbye. <laughs>